Hey, this is Corey Glenn, and I'm going to show in this video how to use the hinge articulator that I've developed uh, so that you can add this to your models and make them actually be able to articulate. And so what you'll need to do is just go ahead and open up your upper and lower model. Uh, they should be completely enclosed, uh, solid objects, and then you'll need to come and import the upper and lower portions of the hinge. So control select both items and then open. And it will pull those into the project, but these are obviously not oriented yet to the models. And so what we're going to need to do is position those into the models. Now, the way to do that is that you need to control select both the upper and the lower portion. And then once they're uh, both selected, you can push T for transform and we can move this into position. Um, very critical that you always make these movements with both portions simultaneously because otherwise you mess up their relative position to one another and then they snap together in a position which is not uh, the same as what your uh, occlusion should be. So let's position this with the hinge being right about at the plane of occlusion. Uh, you've got complete freedom as far as where you want to put this. I mean, if you wanted to measure back 100 millimeters uh, like a Bonwell's triangle to really replicate uh, more of an anatomical hinging position, you can certainly do that. But what I'm going to do is just make this where it's right at the occlusal plane and about a 45 degree angle um, to the models. So accept that. They should be centered as you see here. And now all that's left to do is connect them. Now I could connect them by just simply dragging this in until the models uh, impinge into one another enough. But my preferred way of doing it is just to use the select tool. Let's select a portion off of the back here with the, the spot and then just push T for transform and you can drag this backwards into the upper part of the hinge. Okay, accept that, repeat the process on the bottom, select, T for transform, pull it straight back until it's connected. Now. While they are touching one another, they're not um, the, si the same object just yet. So what we need to do is now go up here, select the upper part of this hinge and the upper part. Oops, I've got that uh, actually spun around, but that's okay. It's the same principle. Um, select the parts on both uh, the upper side and then combine and then come back. Same process. Combine. And now you have independent upper and lower objects. And everything should be good to go. The last uh, modification that you might want to make, and this is certainly optional, if you print this, it's clearly going to have to use supports. I like to print without supports whenever possible. So simply coming across here with a plane cut, we can now put a flat base on this entire um, portion of the model and the hinge and then repeat the process on this lower. So edit, plane cut, and there we have it. So now these uh, parts are ready for printing. Let's accept that. These parts are now ready for printing and they're going to have a nice hinging mechanism and when you uh, print these independently, laying both of them down on the build plate as so, you'll be able to take these out of the printer, uh, clean them off, and then pop the two portions together. They'll have a nice snap fit and it should close right into the occlusion that you have uh, virtually represented right here. So I hope you enjoy the part.